Uh, now, the Japanese central bank has pumped record amounts of cash into the system today to stabilize the economy after the earthquake. But is the country headed into a recession, another one from this national disaster? Well, for more, we're joined this morning from D.C. by the deputy director and also the senior fellow of the Japan chair at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. He's Nicholas Seicheni. Nicholas, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and it's the top of mind for everybody. You know, as Japan rebuilds and comes out of this earthquake, do they ris risk, risk, as they're coming out of recession, do they ris risk another one going in? Well, certainly this uh, earthquake struck at a time when Japan was uh, just showing some signs of growth, and you'd have to imagine that uh, the economic pressure in the short one will be significant. Uh, the Kobe quake in 1995 uh, caused about $100 billion in damage, mm. the equivalent of 2.5 percent of GDP. Uh, this earthquake in the Northeast uh, was not in the industrial heartland. Uh, nonetheless, with the tsunami added in, uh, there are a lot of uh, unpredictable factors. Uh, one of the ministers in the uh, government said today that the cost could rapidly surpass the totals from, from Kobe. So there are a lot of challenges in the short run. On the other hand, we can expect uh, some emergency spending from the government, right. uh, and over time that could lead to some actual uh, improvement in the economic situation. Uh, but obviously, in the current circumstances, uh, you know, there are questions about stability. But does Japan have the money to rebuild? Do they have it? Well, certainly, uh, outstanding debt is an issue, uh, about 200 percent of, uh, uh, <coughs> of productivity mm -hmm. at the present time. Uh, but they do have some discretionary funding in the current budget for reconstruction, uh, and there are plans uh, to issue uh, additional bonds. Uh, so I think, you know, it's, it, it looks pretty good right now, uh, but the um, degree of, of destruction in the Northeast and the uh, cost of the reconstruction effort, not to ma mention the uh, nuclear plant situation in Fukushima, right. uh, presents a lot of challenges. So we'll have to see how this plays out. Uh, how does this, uh, Nick, in your view, change the economic game in Japan? I mean, how does it? Well, we have to remember how, how key Japan is in the Asia-Pacific economy and also the global supply chain. Uh, we've seen several factories close today. You uh, had some analysis earlier on the auto uh, industry. Uh, so this could have some, some ripple effects. Uh, and I think, you know, going into the, before this earthquake occurred, there were questions about the capacity for Japan uh, to innovate again and, and recapture the economic dynamism that, that, that we saw in, in, in the 80s and, and early 90s. Uh, but <clears throat> I think, uh, you know, Japan is still the third, uh, world's third largest economy right. uh, and, and can stand up to the challenge. So we don't have to be uh, too pessimistic. No, and, and I mean, and, and, you know, some of the analysis I was reading this morning is that this may actually be the, 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 the catalyst, so to speak, however tragic it is, but the catalyst to get Japan to put its fiscal house back in order. Could this be? Yeah, I think, I think that's right. Uh, and politically, there was a lot of paralysis and, and partisanship uh, leading up to this tragedy. And I think now is, that's going to be swept away and we're going to see more of a focus uh, on economic recovery. And, and in the long run, that, that could uh, be a positive for Japan. Okay, Nick, thank you. I appreciate it. Nick Seicheni uh, from the Center of Strategic and International Studies talking about the economic impact of this quake.